let me present to you the Mortar and Pestle. A double bunker, easy enough for a noob to make, and affordable enough that you won't have to spend all day farming. My name is Geezer, and without further ado, let's get to the tour. So what I've done is placed a ladder to get in. You can place a twig jump up if you prefer. This sealed roof piece here for the bunker will not interfere with your ability to use the ladder. As you can see we have a drop box for storage here, a couple of them, and a sealed bunker here. So when you log off you can place the roof piece, this triangle roof piece, onto the twig and that will seal the bunker and then replace this twig triangle and you can you know reseal it again at your convenience whenever you want place a little campfire in the corner just for some ambiance and meat cooking coming in uh, you'll see that we've got a first metal door in here as well as our workbench box underneath we've got another door garage door and our first loot room this is a spacious and generous loot room with um, easily four large boxes and uh, four small boxes. I'm sure you can optimize this a little bit better. I do leave this um, free just for convenient jump up here. And coming to our second door, we've got three furnaces and another loot room where I have um, a large and a small box and another large box will fit up here fine too. No problem. And then we come to our second bunker. So going inside, we've got our core, where I, which I have um, upgraded to metal. And we've got uh, one bag and then a couple of boxes in here. Break this twig and it will destroy the bunker. It's a little trickier to place the deployables and to get around. Um, but this allows you to put the bag in between bunker layers, which I find very useful. Um, a lot of times I may want to use this bunker layer with this layer sealed. Uh, and that way um, you have a choice of which when you want either bunker to be sealed. So this still offers you three um, furnaces. You're going to have to place this bag a little bit carefully. What I do is I will place the bag and the workbench when the ability bunker here is open. It's very important that you place that carefully. Best to do it when it's open because if you just place it on the floor, it will allow you to place it in a variety of orientations that um, won't survive the opening or the unsealing of the bunker. So if you were to place the bag or the workbench kind of at half or mostly sitting on top of this ceiling tile, when you unseal the bunker, um, they're just gonna despawn basically or be destroyed. So if you uh, open this and then place this mostly on this tile here, it's just hanging over the, the tip of the bunker and this will fit just inside here um, they're going to be fine and just to show you that how that would look everything is still okay and you can still reseal so you jump up onto the workbench here um, what i do is i crouch down in here when i come out and then I jump up on here and then I jump up onto the workbench. And then you're gonna be able to shimmy up into here to get to the other loot room, although it's a pain to do. So that's why I like the initial, um, the initial way with the three furnaces in the corner just cause it's so easy to get around. But as you can see, not too much of a hassle. You just gotta kind of wiggle in and then you can access all these boxes up here, no problem. And finally, um, I have thought about kind of additional security 
and what I like to have when I was starting out and I I like to use a suicide bunker when I was just starting out it was the first bunker that I used um, it didn't require me to seal or unseal anything and it provided a lot of security and I found that it wouldn't get raided a lot of times um, if it was a very small base with a high qual core so if you wanted to add a suicide bunker and have a triple layer bunker on this design you just come out here um, you can do it after the fact if you want and just build an extra kind of one by one attached that you're going to upgrade to high qual make sure that you place your bag inside here before you seal it that's very very important uh, you can have things wherever you want of course but you're going to place this bag in here upgrade everything and then it's up to you you may use that suicide bunker as a loot room for you know great loot or what what you really like whatever it is if you're a farmer or a pvp chad and you know you're not going to go into it very often uh, it's a big hassle getting in and out of your uh, your suicide bunker because you're gonna f1 kill to get inside here um, so it is great for security i'd probably high qual as much as possible in this situation that one you could probably leave just metal um, so with this bunker it would change the upkeep cost quite a bit that's the other thing um, I want to keep my as a solo I want to keep my high qual cost maximum 25 or 30 maybe per day um, or else I'm just farming all the time and I really like using the designs that just use the metal because they don't attract attention as much and they're still quite strong so this with just metal probably costs around 350 metal frags and a thousand stone per day and then a couple of wood maybe nine wood per day for the twig or something like that um, when you add on the high qual portion well you've got an ad additional 17 high qual and there's your exact we're pretty close so there you go only two two wood for that twig um, obviously we can rotate this but in this situation when they had a suicide bunker most people would probably destroy the TC and then place it inside here just because this would be the most secure room in the base and then it would be pretty easy to add one layer of honeycomb on the outside here just say stone honeycomb and that's probably it's gonna disguise this suicide bunker and still give you quite small of a profile but all of this is preference tailor it customize it really change it however you like this is a very small footprint that allows for a lot of security a lot of customization very easy for a noob to set up the only tricky part is getting the um, the ceiling, ceiling the roof bunker here, which I really don't think is that tough. It just you got to fiddle with it. So destroying this, just to give you an idea, um, basically you could use a ladder or a your furnace as a jump up. That's that's what I would do. Um, so I would probably just take this out and destroy that and then you could use the furnace in here but let's put the twig back here again all these things can be customized really however you like so these are just examples and you know maybe use them for inspiration so this is the trickiest part. Um, I usually have this sealed when I place it so I can walk back a little bit. So let's do that. Uh, 
that's all there is to sealing this. I hear in other videos that people want these to be the same type of material, um, which is fine, but to be honest with you, I really don't think you're fooling anybody, especially when they see these foundation pieces metal, which is really necessary to um, really fortify the weak point of any kind of stability bunker that's this design. Uh, people could destroy those foundation pieces and get access to your bunker. So we upgrade them at least to metal very quickly. The first thing you'd upgrade would be these two things and then the core probably. But um, now that we've got this sealed, let's try to place the roof triangle on here. And really, it's just a matter of, of time, you know, just fiddling with it. And as you can see, it's not really that difficult. It just takes a few seconds to do. And you can still place the furnace in there. So when you destroy it, you've got to jump up. It's a pretty good place to put uh, some more, another furnace as well. Obviously you can't jump up here right now. And I really can't think of anything else to tell you about this design. Like I said, um, just make what, what you want with it. Really, I started out with a suicide bunker in my first kind of bunker design when I was starting out. And then I added this stability bunker because it really is easy to make and to add on to a one by one or some very small um, footprint of a base. And then um, much later on, I added on this as an option you may decide that you don't need all three layers of bunker, but this is really just a demo to show you that it's really not that difficult to have three bunkers, two or three bunkers, in a base that is still livable, we, where you've got lots of storage, it's super compact, super cheap, um, and you can expand it and fortify it really as you like and have a really good chance to you know, survive the wipe without um, getting raided or having the raiders give up part way through. So they may bro if they may blow through these walls if you haven't upgraded and then get to this loot room or blow through you know one of these walls and get to the top loot room. But you may find that the core bunker is still secure or if you have a suicide bunker then that one is, is still secure as well because it's much more expensive to blow into those compartments when they're blowing through walls and in some cases they're going to be blowing through metal or high qual walls which um, really increases the raid cost. If you have any other questions just leave them in the comments and I'd be happy to do a build video for this. I don't think it's too tricky but um, just let me know what you'd like to see and please subscribe if you'd like to support my channel. It really helps out a lot. I'm brand new to this, to the YouTubing um, and filming video, although I've, I've got about 2,000 hours of rest. So um, thank you for watching, and I've got more coming up soon. Take care.